Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV. The Lord's been talking to me again about the subject of leadership, radical leadership, I'm calling it. And I want to continue in that for a minute, for a minute, a minute, a minute, a couple of minutes. God is, uh, is telling me a few things, you know. Leaders are are to share their experiences, their crises, their crises, their crises. If we could pluralize the word again, and their triumphs, their tragedies, and their triumphs, because people in this world are going through things that are horrific. People really go through a lot of things, and not many people want to talk about how to help somebody. I, I was, uh, I'm in connection with some people and they're, they're talking about, you know, rightfully so, rare people, very rare, speaking about their tragedies and their triumphs, their adversities that they're overcoming, their overcoming attitude. You have to have the will to win. You have to have the will to fight. And if you're going to have anything great in this world, or in this life, you're going to uh, have a fight over it. Know that. And what separates the men from the boys, so to speak, so to speak, and the ladies from the girls, is uh, a radical warrior mentality. You know, a person that is not afraid to stand up and fight for what's right. Fight for the light. Fight for what's right. Woo! Create a a successful world. Your own world needs to be a successful world. I heard this principle years ago. I heard this so clearly. Your wor your world is framed by the words of your mouth. World words. Your world, your personal world, your private world, your public world, your world is framed by the words of your mouth. What you say is important. I have a militant rule that I've been doing for years. I speak only what I want to have. I don't say anything that I don't think is something that if because I said it, it could happen, or what I'm saying could actually happen, then I won't say it. I'm militant, I'm militant about that. And when anybody's going to speak anything, you know, about the scenario of, you know, the other thing, something that could happen or what, go wrong or what, I stopped them. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And if they got it out of their mouth too fast, I override it and cancel it out and say, but it won't happen in Jesus' name. I say it under my breath. I'll speak it out and cancel and nullify the thing that was negative. I will not tolerate any wrong talk. As a prophet, you know, I better believe in my words. I better believe in God's words. And what God's used me to say has come to pass and shaken the known world. And many nations of the world that affect the millions of people's lives. You know, think about that. So, um, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in in right words and powerful words. And uh, so, let me make that a premise on this. I believe I'm in volume four of this series I've been doing on radical leadership, and I got into a couple of other topics, but. Uh, along the way, but here we're back in this thing, and this will become a great book. And I have another title, a couple of titles, working titles I'm running for. I won't say now, but let's just say Radical Leadership. That's what I said from the beginning, but uh, I have a better title for the book. But I'll announce that when the book comes out, when it's done, of course, or right before or as it's coming out. So, uh, I was saying this yesterday, we have a responsibility not to remain stuck in any situation that's detrimental to our life. That's number one. And I want to say this. Okay, let me, let me move into this here. So the power of right words, if you, you, you need to say the right things, and if something's wrong, you need to cancel it by overriding it with your speech. You need to say, you know, uh, no. And say the, the positive thing or the better thing and uh, let, that, let that ring loud in the, in the spirit world. 
Watch your words. Say things in faith and speak visionary things for the future, what you want to have. And keep commanding it till you see it. Now, the principle of Mark eleven twenty four. let me get into this for one second, says, what things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So we pray, we believe, we receive what we want, what we need, what we want, what's a good thing that God wants to answer by fire and give us. And he does want to give us a lot of things, good things. Not bad things, good things. And we say it like that and say, I thank you for it, Lord. And then you said, I'll have it. But it's okay to keep commanding and the manifestation of it and keep thanking him for it because you already received it by faith. You understand? You received it, but you're, you're speaking like using a weapon of warfare to make things manifest. This is very important. Very important. The power of right words. The power of speaking the right thing. And in faith. You know, by the gift of faith. And speaking things that are visionary. I want to talk about people for a second. In the midst of all of humanity, most people are fans and spectators rather than solution givers. Most people are fans and spectators of events sports, television, celebrities, movies, happenings in the world, political stuff, political world, the political world. And most people are, are spectators and fans of certain people, but they're very uh, un, unoften t to be solution givers. You know, some, you know, Albert Einstein said there's three kinds of thought. Those that talk about people, mere people, you know, things about people, well, look at that, look at that, you know, you ever see people in a mall, and some people walk by, and these, these low lifes, their eyes turn, and they look, and they stop making comments about them, or how they look, how they, that's, that's an ignorant person, that's a low, that's a low thinking person, you know, leave people alone, man, you know, like, if you see something really amazing about a person, you want to think about it, and make a note of it, or say something to someone, if it's good, hopefully, not negative, but people do different ways, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it at all or don't do it often. But if you slipped, you know, have your laugh and move on or have your, you know, make your note of something and move, move ahead. Second level of thought up is to, to people that talk about events and happenings. Highest level of thought is people that discuss ideas and solutions to the world's problems, your own problems first and the world's problems also. So we need to do that. And that's becoming a solution giver, a problem solver, a kingdom advancer, a world shaker and a history maker. Somebody that's going to, uh, you know, light, light the world up with uh, some, some new innovative idea. You know, if innovation is happening as it's happened, look at the social media giants, look at the tech giants, the multi-billionaires that have been made by these enterprises because they thought up a, a something and made a solution that touched the masses. Can you believe God for something like that yourself? Can you believe God to be one of the people that can innovate and invent something? There, there was a patent director back I think in 1904 and he said in 1904 the patent the head of the patents in America said don't bring any more patents to this office to patent anything because everything that was made was has already been made because the industrial revolution just happened which was the 1880s 70s 80s 90s the, what they call the industrial revolution there was so much new industry so many things that, that blew people's minds that were made but that was just one level of things but look at all the things that were made after 1904 Look at all the things that were made to the, the 50s, 60s, and 70s, especially the, the 70s and even the 80s. And look at now, how many things are invented and thought up and brought forward in a short time, like even in a year span. The world is changing. They say technology is changing every few months. You know, something becomes outdated. Remember the phonograph? Now they're bringing back the, the long play, the records, you know, with the needle thing on it. That's, that's coming back again, because I think people have gone too nuts with all this digital stuff. So people are like going to get sentimental and play the record again. Remember, you used to you put the record down and 
hit the automatic or else take it with your hand and put it to look at look for the line the song you wanted and drop it there and hope you hit it right and you get good at it after a while and you can get it in between the songs and then the song comes on that's coming back but you know what that thing went out then there was this cds and then now there's like digital files without a disc and the cds and dvds will also go obsolete it's already happening who who gets who plays cds anymore everybody thinks a flash drive a hard drive a transfer of a file now you have the cloud the clouds you have all your files in there all your stuff all your music is in is online you know all that you know what i mean technology so technology is advancing at a very high rate of speed and uh <laughs> Many things are being invented. I want to pray and prophesy that some entrepreneur out there who's a partner of my ministry, friend of mine, connected person in the spirit, will invent something great and become a multi-multi-millionaire. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling they'll be like protégés that, that I'll have, will have, and people we're teaching and imparting to, even pastors of great churches, even evangelists, even other pro yeah, other prophets, young prophets coming up and other prophets. And, uh, you know, the prophet can bless an apostle like nobody's business. An apostle can bless a prophet and everybody else. And a prophet can bless everyone else, too. But there's things that prophets have the keys to unlock things for great apostolic orders and movements. And I believe that people we've been with, where the glory was released. I'm reminded of one event we just did in the middle of America. And the Lord really moved there. I mean, the power of God really hit, and a lot of things will come out of that. We're going to see the, those people raised to another level, the higher levels, and, and I have my hand in that because the Lord releases anointing through me in that, in that event, in that course of a few days there. And that happens all the time. I, I'm, I'm getting testimonies back and remembering things that I had forgotten about. I don't know, sometimes your mind shuts off the past years and you can't remember. You can, People could tell you, you were in this church, in this state, in this city, in this country years ago, and it was, I was there, and I'm like, really? When was that? I, I wonder if I even remember the name of the place or the, or the address or the location. It's like it just becomes a blur because you, you just go so many places. I, I know a man of God, someone told him, you stayed in our home, in their house, ate with them, was a guest in their house, which of course now you know you get too busy, you can't stay in someone's house. It just it's not it's not conducive, and you know you have your own ways and things you want. So if you're in a city, you'll be in a hotel or a hotel suite or hotel some some kind of hotel and or resort, and you you know have your own home life set up very well, and you're used to certain things. But you know he uh, he couldn't remember. So I was reminded by a recording I was listening to, I made of a conversation I had with uh, a servant of God, and they were telling me how I, how they were so blessed when we were at this place. I'm thinking, can you remind me, like, where was it? What town? What city? What church? I, you spoke in the morning, in the, e in the evening, in another church, in the morning, in another church. And I was like, my Lord, can I remember that? So... It's good when you have so many things that you've done. And this is the point, the poignant point here of this testimony is that you've blessed so many people that you've blazed the trail for them. You know what I mean? You've helped them in their life. We need to have a track, track record of that. And God will also help you. You know, Ephesians 6, 8 said... Uh, whatever th good thing a man does, a person does for another person, the same the Lord will do for them. So when you help somebody else, you're really helping yourself because it's a seed for God to come and reward you back with something good according to Ephesians 6 verse 8. That's a law of God. So leaders need to be busy, need to be blessing people all the time. You need to live to give. You need to um, fantasize and imagine of how much you could give. Like if you had a car, someone needed a car, you just have an extra one that you could just say, take this, and give it to them. What a joy. Oh, I feel the anointing. What a joy. 
I've given away about 14 cars. Vehicles. Yep, I don't talk about this much, but you, you're looking at a giver. And I I don't know. I, they'll come, I'll, I'll, un, I'll unleash some of these testimonies. We'll have meetings like that, conferences where lay it out about how God can prosper you and how God can have you give on that level levels and someone may need a house you say well I'll help you get a house or a place to live for a while if you need you know just I could be a, a stepping stone bridge for you I mean this is leadership praise God that's powerful let it be you to be a giver like that somebody unbeknownst to me I didn't recognize the name it just sent a seed uh, through the net and I felt today I was just praying like about an hour ago and I was praying and you know sometimes I need to be doing some other things that I need to be working on and doing but I just get so caught up in God it was it's better to have time with God and then seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you I I'm doing that right now by coming here because I was on my way somewhere I have things to do I have very important things to take care of and I say, no, 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 this is first. I, I, right from prayer and hearing God and getting some notes where he's given me a whole bunch of uh, notes there. I don't know if you can see some of that there. It's backwards on the screen. But I had a picture of me in there somewhere. Yeah, praise God. And, uh, and I'm just write, writing notes, writing notes, writing notes. Because this is, this is the most important thing we can do is help the world. You know, you got to help people because that's the legacy you'll have for later. And we need to win souls because in a hundred years, the only thing we were able to take with us is people. Someone said, what's the most valuable thing in the earth? Is it riches and gold and cars and buildings and real estate? Heck no, because you can't take that with you into eternity. The best, the most important thing in the world, the most beautiful thing in the world is God's own creation and not the animal life, though they're great. But you're not going to be like uh, having them eternally. It's the souls of humans that need to be saved, that can be lost or saved, and we need to see them to get saved. I, I want to make a mission for next year, and I hope I can do some of it starting this year. I believe I will. I don't want to put it off. But I want to have a good future goal, near future goal, or almost immediate, as immediate as I can. To get more into like helping people that are winning souls. To facilitate that. To sow into that. Because we have to have the fruit of it somewhere. You know, if you can't do it all yourself, let's just be realistic and honest and transparent for a minute. You, you need to do that. Like you, if you can't go and win the world like thousands and multitudes of people, maybe there's a guy that's on fire and he just lives to wake, or her, she, lady, just lives to wake up and preach, man. And go lead people to Jesus all day long, wherever they can find them. There are people like that, and I know people like that. My God, I feel the anointing. And you know what? If, I, if I'm if i not doing that like they're doing that, let's be realistic now. Can I help them do that? Do I get a part in the harvest of souls being saved if I help them? Maybe they need some facilitation. Maybe they need a plane ticket. Maybe they need an event hall to lead people. Maybe they need some... Uh, things to give to the community, you know, to draw them into the crusade. You know, maybe I could pay for that. Oh, God, help us. God, help us. Oh, God, help us. And we can help facilitate that. You see, someone wants to go win souls. You want to empower them to do it more. I have a couple of people in my, a few people in my mind that I'm thinking about right now. And great ministries that are also doing things, you know, to win souls to Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus, are you? I'm his son and his servant, are you? Then we need to do what he said to do, the Great Commission. Win souls, for he that wins souls is wise. She that wins souls is wise. Proverbs 11. No, 11.25 is the generous. I love that scripture so much I get them crossed with the other one. Or is it, is it 11.25 and I've been misquoting the other one? I don't know. There's, I'm crossing between so many Proverbs verses. He that wins souls is wise. I think it's Proverbs 11.25. I think so. But there's another one I love. Proverbs, um, there's a verse in Proverbs that says, a principle, a, a law of God says, 
the generous one will be like come like a well-watered garden. That's a modern English translation. But it says the liberal soul shall be made fat. Now, liberal these days is not a good word in every setting. And fat definitely isn't because we don't want to be fat. We're, uh, we're fat fighters. <laughs> Get rid of the fat, man. You know, fat is due to laziness. Now, people might have issues in their metabolism and they might have issues... But it's really just laziness and poor diet. And I rebuke every person that's letting themselves gain so much weight and not fighting to lose it. You need a rebuke. You need to get on something. Cut the sugar. Cut the salt. Cut the carbs. I know it's not easy. Drink a lot of water, man. Lady, woman, man. Drink a lot of water. Like you're almost drowning yourself in water. You, you got to push yourself to drink the water. And you can feel it when you're not. You feel like dry. You feel like a little bit, you know, dehy you feel that dehydration. You need to just have a liter of water next to you all the time. I have a lot of them and I keep getting them. Smart water. This is one that I have. I don't know if you can see smart water backwards there. So I, I tell people if you're ever feeling a little stupid, Drink some smart water. I hope it will help. I don't get a commission from this, but I should. And I always have them, and I'm trying to push myself to drink more water. And cut out salt, and cut out sugars, and cut out fat fried foods. Oh, I hate that fried food stuff, man. If you, like, always think because of the way you grew up, or people you're with, or, where, you know, how you did before, or what, you always need to have the fried thing. You, get, you, you need a deliverance in your head. You need to be delivered. No, make it light, less oil. Don't deep fry stuff. I saw this thing. Now, if people would just like get serious about their health and think I'm going to order it instead of just looking at the commercial, I got to get one myself. I, I saved it so many times, the link, but I got to go back and get it. And I'm going to make a note to myself or anybody that's helping me with notes. There's a thing called the air fryer. You want a fried food taste or something? There's a machine you can plug it and put the stuff in there. And it, it actually gives it a fried effect with air, not with oil. Do you know when you deep fry something? Boy, I'm going into a lot of things here. This is great. When you deep fry something and it comes out, all that oil, you're ingesting that, and the body has to fight that, and it's messing you up and inside and causing you to gain weight and get sluggish and tired. You got all that oil in your body. You're pouring all that stuff into yourself. You are the one that did it to yourself. You need to stop it. I long for like light food that's tasty. Someone you can make it with a lot of flavor and it doesn't have a lot of bad ingredients. Organic stuff, healthy stuff. You can eat that just the way you'd eat junk food. And all these drive throughs you know, drive through places. Ordering fast food, they call it fast food. I've stopped. I stopped a long time ago. I went the other day because I felt so hungry. I wanted to eat something. And it was late in the evening and I came from the gym and I was like going back. And I just said, you know, I was trying to go to drive a while to get something better. And I just saw this thing and I thought, I'm just going to do it. It wasn't even good. And that was like the first time in like two years I've done that. I won't do it again. Just keep doing that. Keep longing to make little changes. You know, I know that this ketosis diet, keto diet, ketosis, state of ketosis, where it burns the fat in the body. We need to do that. But some of that food is so whack and so boring. I know. You think so. I think so, too. But, man, we got to get into it. And then there's supplements you can take to help the body to start to burn fat. Do something like that. Start somewhere. There's another thing that people need to do, and I want to give a warning, and I'm trying to get more I'm trying to get more into this myself. In fact, I have to, and I'm doing it. I've done it a little bit, but I need to do it a lot more, very severely. Is you need to find things that soften your blood vessels and cleanse the arteries from arterior arteriosclerosis, which is the hardening of the arteries. And the building of plaque, which is also a cholesterol issue. And then you need to get blood tests. Check your blood sugar. Get your blood pressure checked. 
and do things to combat that. Sometimes you need to take some medications for a while. It's better to keep the number down than to have the number up and you're causing yourself to be in danger. Okay, so if you need medication for a while, but ultimately you can correct all of these things by proper diet. Your blood sugar can go high after a while. It can happen. It can get above normal. It's supposed to be around up to about 100. Your blood sugar level, whatever that's called, uh, there's an A1C or A1A or maybe I'm thinking of a highway. A1, A1, I don't know. Uh, anyway, and then that's a different number, but there's a number that's like supposed to be around 100 of a, a glucose uh, test, whatever. And if you're over 100, not good. And then you get in 200, 200 to 300, man, you're going toward a, you, you got a ballistic problem. You got to reverse that. So that goes high. You need to know about it. You need to attack it back. Don't leave things the way they are and just think you're okay. Correct them by proper diet. That's for a lot of people, and that's prophetic. And that was not in my notes here that I had written on leadership, but that is, I'm as a leader, I'm telling you. We need to attack these things. Now, they say that beets, beets are the nastiest tasting thing I've ever tasted. I I don't like beets, zucchini, squash, eggs, bacon, pork. I don't eat. I don't touch it. Um, and, you know, it's devil meat because Jesus told the devils to go into those animals. and They're very unclean. And they say they sometimes have worms that don't even die at high levels of heat. And you'd have to almost roast the thing to oblivion, like lava style, to kill all the worms. People have worms in them from eating these things. Raw fish. There was one guy that was eating so much sushi, and they said his body was riddled with worms. Everywhere inside had worms. I never liked sushi. I, don't, I never got a witness in my spirit about it. I don't have a witness about eating no raw fish. I don't like the taste of it. I think it's nasty. It's horrible. Yuck. Raw meat, raw fish, dangerous. Why? You have to cook it, steam it, do something. So I, I, sushi, I like the ones they make with the, the seaweed and the rice on the outside or the inside and the outside. And the uh, cucumber and avocado and you dip it into the wasabi with the soy sauce, a little bit of that. Low sodium soy sauce, do that. And mix it up and see, that's a nice kick to it. It's a nice little snack. Maybe the rice isn't the best thing, but it's not so much because well, of the carbs, but it's nice. But raw fish and pork, oh no. Someone said, well, I like those. Fine, knock yourself out, baby. Love it all you want. But uh, we, need to, we need to watch the diet. So I was saying beets, if you try to eat them by themselves, like to cook them, but they taste horrible. But you know what? There's a powder called beet something. And they actually made one formula where they made it like almost a fruity flavor. They added a flavor to it. Or they de-beated the, the beet flavor. They kind of got it out. And you can mix that with water and drink that. What it does is it makes your circulation, helps your circulation, your liver function. And also it causes... Um, uh, a suppleness to the blood vessels and maybe then you use uh, grape seed extract okay from grape seed you, I have a, bo a bottle of tablets I think you need to take a lot of that stuff also the the omega the omega uh, fatty acids family you could take them in supplements they're a bit nasty to take them because you have to you know some will say take three in the morning three at night if you really want to go ballistic but it's kind of hard to swallow those big pills, but you just have to do it. You have to get it in your body. You have to do it. And grapeseed extract, look into that. And look up these things, the benefits of them. And also, uh, CoQ10 is great also for the circulation in the heart. Very important. And turmeric is good for anti-inflammation. This turmeric, turmeric, it's got T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C new hot craze on that stuff all these things you need to be taking you want to combat blood pressure blood sugar height heightened ele elevated levels and you want to combat cholesterol the, and the clogging of the arteries 
in advance and you'll never have a bad problem. You'll never have a bad heart. You'll never have clogged the blood vessels that go to the heart. Wouldn't that be better? But you got to start now. You can't wait till you, you know, you have a moment and it just explodes on you. It's not going to happen to me. And I say that. I'm never going to say, you know, you, remember the guy on the TV show he used to act like he was having an attack all the time when he talked when someone talked about his ex-wife and he got so annoyed, you know. It's a comedy show. You don't do that. Don't say things like, I'm on this. I think I'm going to get into my notes on the next broadcast. I don't know. Lord, maybe I'll just try to kick off a few here before I go. But, you know, you, as I'm on this, you need to stop saying bad things out of your mouth. You need to stop ingesting bad things into the body. The principle for this is Jesus said, it's not what goes in the man that defiles him more than the what comes out of the heart. For out of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Evil and iniquity, compromise and all that comes out from the heart. That Jesus was making that principle. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you can't corrupt yourself by what you're putting in yourself that's bad. So in and out, in and out, in and out. Good in, good out, good in, get in, out. You are what you eat, eat the word. Let me tell you this as a leader. As a radical leader, I do radical things. I play the word all night while I'm sleeping. I've been doing that for months. Uh, and I want to do it the rest of my life. I don't care that someone else's voice, I said this before, is going on while I'm trying to sleep and there's another voice talking. Some people say they think they'd be disturbed by that. Well, I don't want to hear any sound. I want all the lights off. I want to knock. Help yourself as if, you know, whatever you want. I want the word... I, because, you know, in the daytime, we're busy doing things. Like, if I'm talking on the phone and I'm trying to think and I'm driving, or I'm going somewhere and I'm here to there and I got a lot, I'm in the business mode of things. Can I have something playing all the time? No. But while, when I lay down to go to sleep, I put it on and my ears are hearing it and my heart is saying amen to it all the time I'm sleeping. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful power key right there. You want success? Know the word. You want to know God? Know the word. And positive affirmations. It's okay to get the one, one recording that would be aff positive affirmations. I want to make a lot of those. I want to make those for our partners and friends around the world. I'm going to do it. I'm excited about that. Okay, so good in, good out. Did you get that? I'm telling you this as one of God's leaders on the edge. Good in, good out. Put in what's good. Let what's good come out. Let your heart be right, be pure. Great apostle said, Thomas Manton, your greatest gift is not the prophetic, although people call you prophet all over the world. I'm quoting him. And this is on my website. You can see the clip on my website on thomasmanton.com. Go there, click it, and you'll see the video under Dr. Mike Murdoch in that section. And he said, your, your, your highest gift is your heart because your heart is very sincere. It's greater than your prophetic grace. Oh, what a statement. Oh, God, I feel the anointing. What an honor. What a privilege. What, what a privilege it is to serve the Lord. We need to take it more seriously. Listen, the call of God that's upon you, the call of God that's upon me, we need to give ourselves to it a hundred thousand percent, a trillion percent. And I, I was saying this earlier, I have things, the places to go, I have time frames I'm on. I mean, I'm not uh, like have to be somewhere scheduled at a certain moment, but there's a lot of things that I'm doing, you know, today. And I just said, no, I, when I finish this, I'll go do it, do them. This is more, this is important. This is our life. This is the kingdom of God. Oh, God. Help your people to see that. And let them not be spectators and fans of events and observers of things, but let them be doers, action people, to make the world a better place to live because they did something meaningful and great. You want to be unforgotten? Do something unforgettable. You want to be memorable? You have to do something to be remembered. You want to be remembered? You have to do something memorable. So do it. I have that on my voicemail. Call my voicemail. You'll hear the message. 
um, 747-263-2484, which is 747, easy to remember, I like the plane, 747-26-FAITH, 747-26-FAITH, anywhere in the world, you can call that number, it's a U.S. number, plus one, 747 Two six faith, leave me a message and I will get back to you. It's a great way, a great way to contact me directly. It's my private voicemail, and uh, I'll get it. I'll have the notification of it. I'll see, and we'll talk back. It's a brilliant, brilliant. Twenty four hours a day. You don't ever have to worry about it. Calling late or early or what, not disturbing anything. It's going right into. The voicemail, uh, you can call anytime, all day, every day, anytime. Plus one, seven, four, seven, two, six, three, two, four, eight, four, which is two, six, faith. Plus one, if you're out of, out of America, if you're in America, just seven, four, seven, two, six, three, two, four, eight, four. Leave me a message if you'd like to. Ask about booking us for a speaking engagement, to speak in your meeting or event, or for prayer requests, or personal correspondence, or for partners to uh, talk to us. Thank you all that are sowing seeds into the, into our world missions, which is a lot. We have a lot going on all over the world. We're increasing our operations. Everything's going on, on, up, up, up. So please do. Uh, get involved with our World Missions pro programs. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. You can also sew on Cash App, dollar sign, DR, Thomas Manton. You can also sew on PayPal, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. Just like that. I'll make another one for the ministry, but right now that's the way we have it in the system, which is for the ministry. It's a ministry thing, account and all that. But, um, uh, uh, it has my name on it, but we'll make one for the ministry also. But you can use that paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. Very easy. Cash app is dollar sign DR for doctor. Dollar sign DR Thomas Manton. And the website is the all in all. You can donate there, sow seed, tithe, offer. I. On thomasmanton.com, T-H-O-M-A-S-M-A-N-T-O-N. -S -S -A -A and I'm, I'm believing God for people to get wealthy in business and get blessed in business. I, I am believing, I am believing God. I am feeling prophetically that the Lord is going to really, really pour out His grace. When you're sowing any seed as a partner, as a friend, I, and for our world missions, I am going to send you, especially if you're in North America, if you're in North America, I'm going to send you this 40 diamond keys for your success, the benefits of excellence, and also the power to create wealth, a DVD I did in a great conference, and the content in these is riveting, absolutely life-enhancing and lifting and altering. It'll, 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 it'll it's, and there's anointing in it for breakthrough, I, I'm telling you. So, before I go, thank you, Lord, for all that talk on health and words. This is powerful. That was prophetic. Because, you know, I did not plan that. I didn't plan it that way. But, and I, I'll come back at you with some notes. But I, uh, so, so, let me close with this. Leaders are people that are in the game. Not just watching the game, but they're in the game. And I pray that you'll get in the game. Thank you for being my partner and friend. I'll continue with... Uh, the rest of my notes that I've written on the next volume. And the Lord bless you richly. I love you. Thank you for uh, listening and enjoying this. Share this with all of your friends and people. And uh, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And you do pray for me also. Thank you for that, you intercessors. Real intercessors, you know. I, I gave a prayer request to a pastor friend who had given me a great prophetic word. And uh, he just did this thing like, oh, Father, bless my brother in Jesus' name, what he needs. I was like, that's not, I, I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, thank, you know, thank God for all of it. But I'm talking about real prayer warriors, people that care, they deepen the spirit. Lord, let the move of God happen. Let everything be arranged the way you want. Close every wrong door. 
Open every right door. Open the floodgates. Let prosperity come. Money, riches, and wealth come. All, all of the provisions for the visions. My God. And on and on and on by the Holy Ghost. There are people that God's given that assignment to. But I'm praying for your business. I'm praying for your livelihood. I'm praying for your breakthrough. I'm praying for you to get up and get moving as a leader. And take the steps that God wants you to take right now. To, uh, to get on with the program. Let's remember the Great Commission. We need to be busy and we need to be seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and doing what he wants and teaching people, training people, evangelizing the world and making disciples of all nations. And that's the, that's the ultimate thing we can do that's going to last for all of eternity. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. Love you much. Talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you. Remember the words of Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord thy God who will teach you to profit through the prophet here. And he'll lead you in the way you should go. So get up and get moving. Let's move together in Jesus' name. Love you much.